Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. And part two of our Balfouri commune. Now you would have seen in Monday's video, we, um, I say we, camera lady, tore it to pieces, demolished it, and we caught all the spiders up. And, uh, and then we were, in, we were in a little bit of a dilemma, if I'm totally honest, because the whole reason we started this um, decision to actually rip all of this apart was because we hadn't seen any spiders for quite some time. And we were popping in and out in the night with a torch, didn't see anything. And then literally, I think about two weeks ago, we had three males appear just out of the blue popped out and they went wandering around everywhere. And I said to the camera lady, I'm not sure there's much going on in there anymore. We were throwing food in and it was disappearing to some extent, but we were still seeing a little bit of food. And even when we sprayed the enclosure to give them some water, we still didn't really see much action either. So it was a little bit confusing. So we took the decision to pull it all apart, find out exactly what we've got. It's been running for about two years. So uh, it was well worth it. And we were surprised to find that we ended up with, I forget how many I said now, uh, what do we have here? Four, eight, 12, 15 females, 15 females and three males. I think that's right. Um, so now we've, got, we've obviously got all these females and we were a bit sort of like, wasn't expecting that. So we've taken the decision to actually rebuild this same commune again. The males we will keep out. We won't put those back in. We'll keep those out. There's no point putting them in there. We don't get much in the way of success with males breeding in a commune. And I believe that the majority of this is, although our Balfouris do actually um, cohabit with one another, they don't necessarily live in the strict sense of a commune, um, especially in the wild state. Now, there's been very little um, literature about what they do get up to in the wild state, but I think, my own personal opinion, is I think that we've over-exaggerated the communability of the Balfouri. And um, although they do it, I don't believe they do it necessarily like that in the wild. I think they live in loose communities where, you know, males and females will get to, to mix and what have you. But when a female is um, gravid, she will then wander off somewhere on her own, quiet, have an egg sac, hatch them out, and hey presto, they will join the world the same as any other spider does. In the commune, the males are constantly harassing one another. The females are constantly harassing one another. And um, it, sort of, it doesn't work as a breeding program. So we found our best results is having them singly, and we get really, really good results like that. Um, and we breed them consistently like that. Although in a commune, we've only ever bred them once, and we only ever pulled, I think it was seven babies out of it, which is really, really low. These guys normally breed a lot more. So what we're going to do, we're going to set this one up again, and we're going to put all of our females back in, We'll probably keep three or four out to add to our breeding, but the rest of them, they're going to go back in there so we can set up another nice commune. So last time we had them on um, sand and um, excavator clay, which, although it looked nice, I didn't really like it, to be fair. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to put these on soil. So we've got a relatively dry potting compost mix here. And you've also seen in there, there's lots of other bits and pieces. And this is because we've reused quite a lot of different substrates and we've mixed them all together. Um, making sure that they're from, most of the stuff that we put in here is actually soil that was used in with um, different isopods. So it's not really spider based, it's all been from old isopod um, tubs that we had. So we're just going to fill it up. I 
this will work out better for when our spiders start to build their tunnels and things it will be much better I find the excavator clay although it's it's quite popular I find it a little bit too heavy and I'm not overly keen on it so we're gonna put this in here right I think we've gone with quite a fair bit there so that's cool so the beauty of the Balfour is they're very very easy to set up very very easy so what we can do there we've literally layered that in now we're going to put some cork barks in different places um, and this is really the idea of this is to give our spiders somewhere in which to disappear and hide while they're getting ready to um, to build their enclosure so we're just going to pop them in like so nothing too drastic so I need to give them somewhere to disappear and then we're going to use the old branches that we had in the old enclosure now you notice we've cleaned the web off of them but we've not been particular about it um, and this is because this will still all have um, the scent and the hormones you know they'll be able to pick all of this up from the old stuff so hopefully it will make them feel a little more at home this will give them the anchor points so that they can rebuild their house bear in mind we just need to keep make sure this one here doesn't get in the way of the glass and we can literally we can do whatever we want with this stuff absolutely ideal so you can just play around with it just build it up as you want now uh, what else we got Look down like so just interlock them a little bit one last little bit here which we can just place here and that will just give them that little bit of room but this isn't going to work is it because the top one <laughs> so you've got a sticky up bit. i've got a sticky up bit so what we're going to do with this one is because we like the shape of this we're going to snap it off here there you go and we can take that little bit off there and that way we should in theory be able to still get our our lid in there i'm going to put this bit in here There we go. How's that looking? Terribly says, look. After that, that's it. There we go. Right, we're all in. I think we're good. Now, uh, what we will do now is because we've got no um, no webbing in here at all at the moment, we are going to put a water bowl in the front here, which we can fill up. Now this will, um, this is because our spiders still need water. Now generally speaking, we would put a water bowl in with our spiders, but with heavy webbers, it doesn't really work out so well because quite often or not, the spiders will web the bowl over and then they don't get a drink anyway. So what we do with our heavy, heavy webbers is we just spray very, very gently, we spray the webbing and then they will come out and they will take the droplets of water off of that webbing now this is something that we've done for a long long time and it's been nice actually to see in the hobby now there's many more people are actually spraying their balfouris because there was always the opinion that they need to have it extra extra dry this isn't the case we found that they work really well around about the 60 65 percent humidity they, they they like it they thrive so they do really well like that. So what we do now is because they've got no webbing that we can spray and the water would just disappear into the soil and that in itself would make it too wet. So although they like a little bit of moisture, they don't like getting their feet wet. 
So it's two different things and we have to try and work on that. So we give them a water bowl so they can come out and get a drink. And it won't take them long. Once we put them back in here, they will soon move in and um, before you know it, they'll start webbing it all up. So what we're going to do now is we have got our spiders here. Now, sometimes putting them back is worse than taking them out because they don't actually know where or what they're going to do. It's all a bit alien to them. So we have to be a little careful. What I'm doing now is I am just literally flicking through. Have a little look. They're nice. That's a nice one. All right. I think what we'll do is we'll keep them four out. They will make nice future. That's a nice one as well. Oh dear. Oh man, this is a problem, isn't it? We're spoiled for choice. Four will be enough. Four will be enough. We have got other females that we've got for breeding as well. So that is going to give us four, eight, twelve. Twelve spiders. Oh, I think you just <laughs> you just hate a flash person. So we've got twelve females that we're going to put back in here. And um, we've got our lid over there, which is completely out of my reach. Let's put this back under here. We are going to get ourselves prepared because, as we said, quite often or not, putting them back is worse than taking them out. So I think what we're going to do, I am going to work from the top here. We're going to drop them in. Hopefully they're not going to run away. We've got a catch cup here. No lid. Let's get a lid. That's it. So we've got a catch cup should we need it. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to plonk them in. Now you see all the fun that Camera Lady had getting them in these boxes. I'm going to show you now just how easy it is to get them out. It's very, very simple. We literally open the lid up and we can plonk it down here. And it'll probably bolt straight out and over the front, there we go. Well, there we go. Now you remember me saying to you that these guys often are worse going back in than they are coming out. So what we're going to do, we're just going to guide it, there we go. That's one down. I think what we might have to do, how are we gonna do this? We might have to put the roof on and put them through the front. Because I've got a feeling that we're gonna end up having fun and games. So what we do is we put this in, I was hoping we'd be able to keep it open so that we get to see a little bit more about what's going on. You're determined to go out, aren't you? Go in. Uh, what are we caught on? Right, there we go. That's it. Right, are we there? We good? What side do you need to be? Good question. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that like that. Then we're going to get our other piece of glass. I'm going to put that in the back. And we're going to put them in here. Can you still see through there? Not really. Yes, you can. Ooh. You're trying to make life difficult for me. Right then. Here we go. Let's get these girls back in. Now, you would have remembered that I said, as long as we get these back in relatively early, see how we angle the box straight across the table? 
<laughs> that didn't work out well, did it? All right, hold on. Don't be a nuisance, come on. Right, let's try this again. I think we should have let camera lady do this, guys. Just saying. All right. Go on, go inside. There we go. Let's put that one there. I can lean through and grab them. So we can do another one. Yes, so you remember we said as long as we get them to go back in relatively soon after they've been separated, we shouldn't have too many problems and they should all mix back in nice and easy. Now, um, if we leave them out for any great length of time, then they soon become back into that solitary way of thinking. And we'll, we'll have a little chat about this once we get them all in. So although this is a brand new home, these guys have still got that communal attitude about them. And we can see this by the way that you know, they're, even when they, they make contact with one another, it's not the end of the world. They're actually quite, quite sedate about it all, which is what we're after. This one was king. He's out. Or she, I should say. This is purely females going back in here, no males. Now, we could, you know, you might ask... Why not put a male in and just see what happens? We know from experience that it just causes problems, really. So I know there has been accounts online where people have actually managed to um, to to have males in there, and they've managed to get you know breeding results, but it's very hit and miss, and. Uh, I'd rather just have a nice steady steady communal and not have to worry about it. And we do all of our breeding externally, so all of our females can have a nice quiet time, as it were. And as you can see now, they're all going back in nice and gently. I think that one literally leapt out of the box. Now, one interesting thing that we would have seen in the last video that we didn't see any really aggressive behavior. And we're not seeing any now. They're still nice and steady. This is the last one. There we go. That's the last one in. So there you have it. There we've got 12 spiders in there. 12 adult female Balfouri. And I think you'll agree, they look absolutely beautiful. They really are nice. Now this in terms of a Balfour, uh, as a communal, isn't very big. We've only got 12 individuals in here. Now, one of the things that we often get asked um, is what is a good number to start? So if you want to start your Balfouri communal, I would suggest that you start off with slings. And I would literally get as many as you can afford for what you want to do. So as a minimum, I would look at sort of five or six as a bare minimum. 10 to 12 is a really nice number. 
um, and you can literally put them together and keep them in a nice small enclosure when they're slings, tiny enclosure, you don't need anything very big at all, get them up a few molts and slowly but surely build them up. The key to giving them, having real success with them is not to give them too much room. So the more cramped they are, the more social they become. If you give them lots and lots of room, they will then in turn set up um, individual territories and this can cause problems. So that is what we want to avoid. We don't want them setting up um, individual territories. So when you get your slings, you can, if you have um, say 10 or 12 slings, you could keep them in something this big with literally just a piece of bark in the middle and then what we would do with them is we would put pre-killed roaches or crickets or whatever you have in there, make sure it's dead. They will come out of a night time and they will eat. Then once you've had two or three malts and they're, they're looking, you know, they're getting up to this sort of size, you could have 10 of them in here at this size, no problem at all. We can then upgrade them into say like a bra blast box um, and, then, and then slowly but surely we build our way up. And that is the key to having decent success. Don't give them too much room too early on and they will all grow. Now, as we said earlier on, this, this um, setup that we've done here now, it looks absolutely wonderful with them all on the back wall there. And they look fantastic. This is purely to be as a um, decorative visual display, something that we can just enjoy and we can watch our spiders build their new home. There is going to be no breeding here because there is no males. Even no, you are. That's so funny. Yeah, it's because your your hand is on it, my dear. <laughs> so it won't take them long. Now, when we were talking earlier on, we were talking about them being as a strict communal. And what I believe has happened here with, with the Balfouri is we have literally tapped into a spider that is far more tolerable of its own kind within a given area. Now, because we get very, very poor breeding results in the, in the fact of um, communal breeding, this points me to think that they are not as communal as we first believe. We are taking advantage of a behavior here and by keeping them in smaller enclosures with more more spiders in there we're keeping them in a cramped in, in way if you like we are stopping that territory behavior very similar to um, if any of you guys are used to uh, keeping fish cichlids are kept in exactly the same way if you keep cichlids just a couple of them in a large in ta large tank they will in fact set up territories and they will hammer each other they will literally pick on each other all the time. And this is because they are constantly defending their territory. So we end up with beaten up fish and what have you. If we put them in a scenario where there is no room to have a territory, we can keep a hundred cichlids in the same space without any problems whatsoever. And we get no aggression from them. They, they are perfectly well behaved with one another. And it's purely because they have no territory to defend. This is what we are doing with the Monosynotrophus balfouri. We are denying them a territory to defend. And this is why they live in this nice communal way. They are very easy going with one another. Now there's many other spiders within the hobby that are also classed as a communal spider. So things like the uh, Villicelli, they're another one, the Gabonensis, the Heterophyllo Gabonensis, these are all spiders that are considered as a communal spider, but they will, in time, predate on one another. We often see um, online about pokies being kept in communal situations. Now, this is probably going to put me in hot water, but I don't believe any of the pokies are um, what we would class as a communal spider. We've seen Metallicas kept in a communal situation. But the way they're kept is in high numbers in a completely clear glass tank with nowhere to hide. 
and this is because we are keeping them in exactly the same way as we would cichlids. They have not got the opportunity to set up a territory, so they put up with each other. This doesn't mean they're thriving. You would never breed them in that situation. I don't believe so anyway. I've not heard of anyone that's breeding them in that situation. So we have to ask ourselves, are we literally taking advantage of a behavior or are we actually mimicking a true behavior? I think we're taking advantage. Um, with a Balfouri, it works well. All of the other spiders, uh, I've spoken to many, many people that have kept them. I've tried many of them myself as a communal and without fail they have all eaten one another as soon as the females start becoming mature as soon as they start getting big enough and start maturing the hormones start kicking in they then become very territorial and they then eat anything that's smaller than they are so it's not what i would class as a communal type of behavior all right so Yes. Food wise, with any commune like this, we often ask, you know, how do you know how much to feed? Well, we would literally, we've got 12 spiders here. We would throw in maybe 20 large crickets or red runners or anything like that. Try not to feed dubia roaches to your colony. If you're going to do it, use the males because the females will just burrow down and disappear. Um, it's good to have prey that will actually run around on the surface so these spiders can hunt it down. Um, and they will do. They will come out and hunt it down. It doesn't matter with adult spiders if you've got a few roaches or crickets running around in there. They will soon get mopped up in no time at all. So don't panic on that. When they're, as we said earlier on, when they're very young slings, we pre-kill their food. I've found in my experience that... Um, New sling Balfouris are very, very slow to kill their own food. So we always pre-kill it, give them that head start, and that seems to work really, really well. And then once they've webbed it all up, we can do away with a water dish, or we can keep it. It's entirely up to you. But once they've got webbing, I like to spray the webbing. And this often encourages them all to come out and say hello and have a drink. So it's a really cool way of seeing your spiders. Just don't get it too wet on the floor because they do not like getting their feet wet. Look at them all up here. They're all up in this side now. Well, if we got really fancy and clever, we can slide the glass to the other side. Yeah, you see? For anyone that might be worried about the one on the ceiling, do they need to be wet? No, that's actually a very good point. Another question we often get asked is, do you ever worry about the mesh on the ceiling with your spiders getting caught up in it? Now, on these enclosures here, these were made to my own design. So I had these specially made for myself. And this is food grade stainless steel mesh on the top. And it's a very tight weave. So they don't get stuck in it. Even with the XOs and things like that, we don't we don't panic on it. Um, we've never had issues with the with the mesh roofs, and I don't see any reason why we should start having them now. So we we keep an eye on things. But as you can see, these Balfouri, although they are a terrestrial spider, they're equally at home climbing up the glass, up the back. They go anywhere. They really do go anywhere, and they're not a particularly heavy-bodied spider, so it's nothing to worry about. They're not going to cause any problems at all. The only thing we don't want them doing is getting back behind the backing. As long as they don't go back behind there, we're all okay. We shouldn't do because it's pretty sealed off, so they shouldn't get behind there. Right then. Well, I hope that gives you a little insight into um, how we keep our Balfouri communes and how you two can set yours up. We've been doing this for some years now, and they've been working out really, really well. And we like the method that we use. It works well for us. So. Um, you know, hopefully there's a few little tips and pieces in there that you can use to set your guys up at home as well. Give them a go. They really are an interesting spider. Right then. I hope you enjoyed that. But don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And we will see you soon, guys. <laughs>